indicating that there's buying pressure down here. One more bar. Again, the market tries to push down. We can see that the lows are making lower lows, but the bars are unable to finish in the, in the low end of the range. In fact, uh, often what I'll put on my chart as a tool, it's simply this little green hash mark, and it shows me the midpoint for each bar. And that, to me, is really the break point. If the market closes below the midpoint, uh, for example, if for some reason this bar were to close down here, that would indicate to me that it was bearish because it's closing in the bottom half of its bar. But because it's closing in the top half of its bar, that indicates to me that there's, there is some bullish pressure there. Uh, so, and look again, it's not, I'm not going to enter specifically using that tool, but I think it's a valid uh, filter to determine whether or not a uh, market is under buying or selling pressure. Okay, so at this point, um, you can see that the market is probing for a bottom. Okay, now let's go back over here, and you can see once again uh, that it is you know, right in the area. Now remember, uh, at this stage of the game, we don't need to be precise. Uh, all we're looking for is an area, in, in, even more specifically than that. The question is, is this an area where it's logical for the market to reverse? And we simply have, what we have to go by is the past trading activity. Have traders in the past reverse the market in this area? And I'd have to say yes, absolutely. Uh, both up in this area here and also down in this area here. So as we continue on, we have another bar. So now we have a total of one, two, three, four hours where the market has consolidated here. Now let's, let's pause for a second and talk about um, actually trading. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. Up to this point, um, you know, the analysis has been pretty vague. We're simply, we're simply looking for uh, a, a generalized area. Now, when you're trying to make a decision to trade, uh, there are a couple of common ways to do that. One of them uh, is based on pattern recognition. You can see there's really nothing going on here as far as patterns. Uh, you know, I guess you could, you could try and draw in a flag pattern like that, but it's, that's, I think, reaching. Um, you know, this is just a low-level consolidation. Uh, you could also look for, uh, you know, what I call the tunnel pattern. But you see one up here, but there's really nothing going on for that pattern up, up in this area. Uh, one other way would be to simply take a Fibonacci ratio. Let's see. Uh, we've got the market. Now we're getting a little bit more information and some possible uh, tradable information. You see that the market held the 786 level. Uh, this, this, in my opinion, is, is um, a make or break point when it comes to Fibonacci ratios. If the market breaks below a 7.86, it's a pretty bearish move, and, and that's where I'll start looking for shorts. But we can see that it held it. In fact, it only got down there on, a, on one spike. Now the market is holding uh, the 6.18. So now we're, we're getting some uh, pattern-based information that we can use to make a trading decision. So now at this point, we could look for the market to break back above the 618 uh, before we're looking for a trade. We could wait for the market to recover back above the resistance area here uh, in order to make a trade. Now remember, if we're going to buy, we're, we have to think that we're going to be able to sell to somebody else at a higher price in order to make a profit. So we have to have some kind of logical reason to think that the market is going to trade higher. Uh, by seeing that, number one, the market is in a logical point, so that's number one, logical point. And two, that we have a pattern. When you have these two things lining up in your favor, this is when you really start stacking the odds in your favor. And, and you start giving yourself a verifiable edge to trade with uh, because you have, a, you have a foundation for, for why the market's going to go higher. Remember, the market doesn't go higher because of MACD. 